Hi, my name is Ashish and in this series we will cover the core concepts of cloud computing. Well, I know you are all interested in the cloud but you are not quite sure what it can do for you. This is the place to start. This is the video. This is the series that will give you a kickstart. And in this video series you will learn cloud concepts such as high availability, scalability, elasticity, agility, fault tolerance and disaster recovery. Understand the benefits of cloud computing in Azure and how it can save you your time and money. You, we will compare and contrast basic strategies for transitioning to the Azure cloud. We will explore the breadth of services available in Azure including compute, network storage and security. So the benefit of completing this video series that we will be doing in the coming days is that you can take the exam EZ900 which is Microsoft Azure Fundamentals exam and start your cloud computing journey. So moving on, as I told you we will explore the common cloud computing services, benefits of cloud computing, decide which cloud deployment model is best for you. You will see the different models, you, can, you will see the different uh, options in which cloud is available how it is useful and then you will decide which one is good for you. Alright, so to start with, what is cloud computing? See, the cloud computing is renting resources like storage, space or CPU cycle on another company's computers. We will only pay for what we use. The company providing these services is referred to as a cloud provider. Some examples providers are Microsoft, Amazon and Google. Well, we have been using cloud for a very long time. You use, you're using Gmail, you're using G, Google Drives, you're using Hotmail, OneDrive, you're using the Dropbox. So this is all cloud. You're not, you're not responsible for the hosting of those services. You are using those services through the internet and utilizing uploading your files downloading your files in this way cloud provides your so this is the basic thing that you're using but in terms of a high performance the cloud provides you with the compute storage networking analytics so the cloud provider is responsible for the physical hardware required to execute the work and for keeping it up to date the computing services offered tend to vary by cloud provider however as I told you, they typically they include compute power such as Linux servers or web applications, your Windows servers, storage such as files and databases, networking such as your uh, connections between the cloud provider and your company, analytics such as visualizing telemetry and performing data. So these, if you will set up on the on-premises on your local data center you'll have to install services servers networking cabling take care of the updates on those servers to keep them up to date that is all hassle that you have to go through but in cloud computing that is all taken care by the cloud provider in which in this case we have microsoft azure amazon aws and the google cloud we have ibm cloud as well we have digital ocean cloud computing as well we have oracle cloud as well alibaba cloud as well but i'm i'm taking into the consideration the three most basic which is Microsoft, Amazon and Google. But this series covers the topics related to all of the cloud providers. So the cloud computing services. The goal of cloud computing is to make running a business easier and more efficient. Whether it's a small startup or a large enterprise, every business is unique and has different needs. To meet those needs, cloud computing providers offer a wide range of services. You need to have a basic understanding of some of the services it provides. Let's briefly discuss the two most common services that all cloud providers offer. Compute Power and Storage. Compute Power When you build solutions using cloud computing, you can choose how you want work to be done based on the resources and needs. For example, if you want to have more control and responsibility over maintenance, you could create a virtual machine. A virtual machine is an emulation of a computer just like your desktop or a laptop you're using now. Each virtual machine includes an operating system and hardware that appears to the user like a physical computer running Windows or Linux. You can then install 
whatever software you need to do the task you want to run in the cloud. The difference is that you don't have to buy any of the hardware or install the OS. The cloud provider runs your virtual machine on a physical server in one of their data centers, often sharing that server with other VMs. Isolated and secure, with the cloud you can have a VM ready to go in minutes at less cost than a physical computer. What are containers? Well, this, this may go over your head, but it's a nice topic to discuss here. You will understand this in coming videos. Containers provide a consistent, isolated execution environment for applications. They are similar to virtual machine except they don't require a guest operating system. Instead, the application and all its dependencies is packaged into a container and then a standard runtime environment is used to execute the app. This allows the container to start up in just a few seconds because there is no OS to boot and initialize. You only need the application to launch. The open source project Docker is one of the leading platforms for managing containers. Docker containers provide an efficient, lightweight approach to application deployment because they allow different components of the application to be deployed independently into different containers. Multiple containers can be run on a single machine and containers can be moved between machines. The portability of the container makes it easy for applications to be deployed in multiple environments, either on premises or in the cloud, often with no changes to the application. Okay, what is serverless computing? Serverless computing lets you run application code without creating, configuring or maintaining a server. The core idea is that your application is broken into separate functions that run when triggered by some action. This is ideal for automated tasks. For example, you can build a serverless process that automatically sends an email confirmation after a customer makes an online purchase. The serverless model differs from VMs and containers in that you only pay for the processing time used by each function as it executes. So if you have made a website using serverless computing or a Lambda function, the Lambda function will not charge you until and unless it gets executed or it gets called. All right. VMs and containers are charged while they are running. So VM is running in case there is less traffic on the application that is hosted on the VM or if, if, if there is more traffic. You are paying a steady price for the VM that is running in the cloud. So this architecture does not work for every app, but when the app logic can be separated to independent units, you can test them separately, update them separately and launch them in microseconds, making this approach the fastest option for deployment. So the trend here is you break the monolithic app to the small partitions. Like Facebook would not update face entire Facebook in one go. So there are bits and pieces. The app, the big application is divided into small applications. And then the enhancement updation and the increments are done on that specific piece of the app. Right? So let's compare the three compute approaches. I'm sorry, the approaches. So virtual machines, containers, and the serverless. So if you would see the virtual machines, you have a virtual machine one, virtual machine two. So if you see the physical hardware, the virtual machine, the physical hardware has a host operating system, then they we have installed a hypervisor, hypervisor like the VMware or Hyper-V. Then you run those virtual machines on that hypervisor. But if you would see the containers, container would directly run on the physical hardware using the CPU and the RAM from the kernel itself. Right. And if you would see the serverless, we have a physical hardware serverless in the serverless one time. You have functions, you have logic apps, you have functions apps in the serverless environment. Now comes the storage. Cloud provides typically offer services that can handle all of these types of data. For example, if you wanted to store text or a movie clip, you could use a file on a desk. If you had a set of relationships such as an address book, you could take a more structured approach like using a database. The advantage to using cloud-based storage is you can scale to meet your needs. If you find that you need more space to store your movie clips, you can pay a little more and add to your available space. 
in some cases the storage can even expand and contract automatically so you pay for exactly what you need at any given point of time so there is like 15 gb you get in the google drive by default when you create a gmail account right they give you 15 gb of the storage on the cloud so that storage is not an external disk attached to your computer or the it is not the space that is used on your phone you can access google drive from your computer laptop desktop or from your phone anytime when you have an internet connection you can even make some of the files to be available offline so that you can access them when you are not connected to network so this is how these cloud storage work and if you need more storage you get an option to you know pay on the monthly or the yearly basis and they would extend the storage and as you pay more you get more discount so that is you the cloud storage I, this would be a small example summary every business has different needs and requirements cloud computing is flexible and cost efficient which can be beneficial to every business whether it's a small startup or a large enterprise okay benefits of cloud computing it is cost effective scalable elastic current reliable global and secure how it is cost effective cloud computing provides a pay as you go or consumption based pricing model so pay as you go is like there are no upfront infrastructure costs no need to purchase and manage costly infrastructure that you may not use to its fullest the ability to pay for additional resources the ability to stop paying for resources that are no longer needed so like if you have made installed a server on microsoft azure and if you are attaching an external disk which is 5 terabytes and let's say you're not using 5 terabytes of that space in one go so though you have allotted 5 gb 5 terabytes of the disk to the computer but you're using only uh, 1 terabyte so you would only be paying for 1 terabyte not for 5g 5 terabytes and if in case you would you know extend the consumption like let's say after couple of months you are using 3 terabytes then from that particular month you will pay the extra cost so this is the pay as you go model this is how the cloud computing is cost effective how is it scalable we can increase or decrease the resources and services used based on the demand or workload at any given time we can have the auto scaling enabled we can do the manual scaling to the number of virtual machines if you want to increase the size of the database web apps any other services on the basis of the load that you would get at certain amount of time so cloud computing supports both vertical and horizontal scaling depending on the needs vertical scaling also known as scaling up is the process of adding resources to increase the power of an existing server some examples of vertical scaling are adding more cpus or adding more memory or horizontal scaling it is known as scaling out is the process of adding more servers that function together as one unit so scaling up is the enhance adding of more resources scaling out is the adding of number of servers scaling can be done manually or automatically based on specific triggers such as cpu utilization or the number of requests and resources that can be allocated or deallocated in minutes how is it elastic as your workload changes due to a spike or drop in demand a cloud computing serve system can compensate by automatically adding or removing resources for example imagine your website is featured in your article leading to a spike in traffic overnight since the cloud is elastic it automatically allocates more computing resources to handle the increased traffic when the traffic begins to normalize the cloud automatically deallocates the additional resources another example is if you are running on an application used by employees you can have the cloud automatically add resources for the peak operating hours during which most people access the application and remove the resources at the usual end of the day so as per your requirement as per your usage as per the load that would increase or decrease over the time you can have the cloud scale up or scale down without paying for that thing for a given amount of time so till the time the resources are in use you would pay till the time resources are not in use you will not be charged 
current when you use the cloud you are able to focus on what matters building and deploying applications cloud usage eliminates the burden of maintaining software patches hardware setup upgrades and other it management task all of this is automatically done for you to ensure you are using the latest and greatest tool to run your business additionally the computer hardware is maintained and upgraded by the cloud provider if a disk fails the disk will be replaced by the cloud provider if new hardware update becomes available we don't have to go through the process of replacing the hardware the cloud provider will ensure that the hardware updates are made available to the user automatically or reliable when you are running a business you want to be confident your data is always going to be there cloud computing provides offer data backup disaster recovery data replication services to make sure that the data is always safe in addition redundancy is often built into cloud services architecture so if one component fails a backup component takes its place this is referred to as fault tolerance and it ensures that your customers are not impacted when a disaster occurs global cloud providers have fully redundant data centers located in various regions all over the globe this gives you a local presence close to your customers to give them the best response time possible no matter what where in the world they are you can replicate your services into multiple regions for redundancy and locality or select a specific region to ensure you meet data residency and compliance laws for the customers secure cloud providers offer a broad set of policies technologies controls and expert technical skills that can provide better security than most organization can otherwise achieve the result is strengthened security and when it comes to physical security threats to cloud infrastructure cloud providers invest heavily involves cameras gates security personnel and so on to protect the physical assets so economies of scale see the economies of scale is the ability to do things more efficiently or at a lower cost per unit when operating at a larger scale cloud providers such as microsoft google amazon are large businesses leveraging the benefits of economies of scale these providers can then pass the savings on to their customers these savings are apparent to end users in a number of ways one of which is the ability to acquire hardware at a lower cost cloud providers can also make deals with local governments and utilities utilities to get tax savings lowering the price of power cooling and high speed network connectivity between sites cloud providers are then able to pass on these benefits to end users in the form of lower prices than what you could achieve on your own okay a brief introduction of capital expenditure which is capex versus operational expenditure which is opex so what does this actually mean in the past companies needed to acquire physical premises and infrastructure to start their business there was a substantial upfront cost in hardware and infrastructure to start or grow a business cloud computing provides services to customers without significant upfront cost so these two approaches to investment are referred to as capital expenditure which is capex and the operational expenditure which is which is opex capex is the spending of money on physical infrastructure upfront and then deducted that expense from the tax bill over time so so the capital expenditure expenditure is an upfront cost which has a value that reduces over time operational expenditure is spending money on services or products now and being built for them now you can deduct this expense from the tax bill in the same year there is no upfront cost you pay for a service or product as you use it so the capex computing cost to typical on premises data center capital expenditure is server cost and the storage cost so the server cost would include all the hardware components and the cost of supporting them you have to make sure that you design fault tolerance and redundancy such as server clustering power supplies uninterruptible power supplies and the server needs to be replaced or added to a data center you need to pay for this compute so you need the immediate cash flow because you must pay for the server up front when the server is malfunctioned the storage so this would include all the storage hardware component and the cost of supporting it based on the application and the level of fault tolerance centralized storage can be expensive 
For larger organizations, you can create tiers of storage where more expensive fault tolerant storage is used for critical applications. Then you would need the capex for the network cost, backup and archive cost. So network cost would include all the on-premises hardware components, cabling, switches, access points, routers. This also includes WAN and internet connections. Backup and archive cost would be to the money needed to backup, copy or archive the data. Options might include setting up a backup to or from the cloud. And the organizational continuity and disaster recovery cost. Along with server fault tolerance and redundancy, we need to plan for how to recover from a disaster and continue operating. The plan should consist of creating a data recovery site. It could also include backup generators. Most of these are upfront cost, especially if you build a data recovery site. But there is an additional ongoing cost for the infrastructure and its maintenance. Data center infrastructure cost. These are costs for electricity, floor space, cooling and building maintenance. Technical personnel, while not a capital expenditure, the personnel required to work on your infrastructure are specific to on-premise data center. We will need the technical expertise and workforce to install, deploy and manage the systems in the data center and also on the recovery site. Then it comes to OPEX cloud computing cost. Leasing software and customized feature. Using a pay-per-use model requires actively managing the subscriptions to ensure users do not misuse the services and that provision accounts are being utilized and not wasted. Scaling charges based on usage demand instead of fixing fixed hardware. Cloud computing can bill in various ways, such as the number of users or CPU usage. However, billing categorizers can also include allocated RAM, IO operations and storage space. We have to plan for backup traffic and data recovery traffic to determine the bandwidth needed. Billing at the user or organization level, the subscription paper use model is a computing billing method that is designed for both organizations and users. The organization or user is built for the service services used typically on a recurring basis. We can scale, customize and provision computing resources including software, storage and development platforms. For example, when user when using a dedicated cloud service, you could pay based on server hardware and usage. Benefits of CAPEX With capital expenditures, we plan the expenses at the start of a project or budget period. Costs are fixed, meaning we know how exactly we are going to spend in this year. This is appealing when you need to predict the expenses before a project starts due to a limited budget. Benefits of OPEX Demand and growth can be unpredictable and can outspace expectation, which is a challenge for the CAPEX model as shown in the following graph. So the infrastructure demand would increase with the time and that could lead to some problems. So with the OPEX model, companies wanting to try a new product or service don't need to invest in equipment. Instead, they pay as much or as little for the infrastructure as required. OPEX is particularly appealing if the demand fluctuates or is unknown. Cloud services are often said to be a child. Cloud agility is the ability to rapidly change your IT infrastructure to adapt to the evolving needs of the business. For example, if the service peaks one month, we can scale to demand and pay a larger bill for the month. If the following month, the demand drops. We can reduce the used resources and be charged less. So this is uh, I wanted to cover. So in the next video, we'll start with the cloud deployment models. So this was the video one for the principles of cloud computing in the AZ 900 series. I'll cover more and more things about this, but the most of them would revolve around theory. And I'll try to bring some of the practicals. At least show you the portal, how would storage computing things would look like, but Mostly it would be theory, so it will be a good for the guys who are new to the cloud computing and want to spend them, spend some time getting into the theory and the basics of cloud computing before moving on to the further things. So I see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Have a good day ahead. Bye-bye.